Yo, what's up, you beautiful people? It's Koga here again with another freaking update to the winter type building. Yes, another update. I was not going to make one until I posted my last video and I got an absolute five head by the name of Z Spy comment to my video and asked me to change some things around that I kind of admittedly misunderstood. Now, the clear speed is the same, the single target changed, and while it's not that visually different, mathematically it makes a big difference. And when I tested it, it was a noticeable improvement. So I'm going to go over it because I want I don't want to misinform you guys. I want to make sure you guys have the most accurate information. Um, this information is going to be basically going to be used for the build guide, um, but it's complex enough again to be its own video. Um, if you guys don't know, it's a freaking essay of a comment in the last video that I posted. And um, yes, we're going to go over a little bit of a gameplay, but still later on, I want to go over first of what he did. So he, we went into a little discussion about uh, certain things that I'm going to go in detail now. But I had some like back and forth with him um things that i disagreed on basically with the gems and i still disagree with him but when i looked at his tree the pub that he sent me oh my lord guys it was admittedly very perfecto it was it was beautiful it was be uh, it, i can't say but anything but it was absolute five bro so let's get into that and detail what he changed in comparison you're gonna like this a lot before we move on to that i'm gonna beforehand apologize if i get a little bit passionate about this because honestly dude this is a type of shit that I really like from PoE, and this is what PV is all about. Not about making money. I know you guys like that shit, but to me, I like experimenting. And this type of back and forth about how perfect, uh, perfecting a build and all that stuff is so interesting to me. So with that, yes, I do stream on Twitch every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at twitchtv The link will be down below. You can also join my Discord. This is our uh, community's been growing a lot lately, so it's a perfect place if you guys want to just jump in and ask me any questions. I might be busy because yes, I do have full time uh, two time job. But I answer as many questions as possible. And of course, you can also leave a YouTube comment, if anything. Right? With that, let's continue. Okay, guys. So what you're looking at is his POB that he sent in the comment section at that video, right? I took a look at it, and I have to admit, it was very, very well done. Now, needless to say, as you guys probably noticed, he dropped all the cluster jewels, which you guys are like, wait a minute, seriously? Yes, he dropped all the cluster jewels. Um, except for, of course, the Holy Conquest one, which is probably the most important one. It's probably required in the build. It's, it's not probably, it is required in the build if you want it to even feel marginally good for clear speed. So that's the only one he kept for logical sense. So in all, the whole point of what we're talking about was that I misunderstood the duration of it. Or more, more like that I misunderstood, I ignored it, think, thinking that it, I assumed things incorrectly. So to best describe this to you, before we get into the POB, I have an Excel sheet that I made here. Yes, it's Excel time. So here, here's, here's where basically where things get kind of interesting, right? So we know that Winter Tide goes from zero stages to 20 stages, right? That's the whole thing. That's the ramp time. And it lasts two seconds in the uh, duration, base duration. So you want to scale cast speed to increase the activation speed because it has a base activation speed of 0.25. And then it has a duration of two. So you want to increase the duration. So the whole point of the build or the skill is, like I said before, it's just scaling enough cast speed so the activation speed increases. And every time it activates, it gains a stage so that it can hit, hit 20 stages as fast as possible. What I neglected was that I invested in enough duration to get the 20 stages. Let me explain. So we know from, from 0 to 20, this little line is the ramp, right? Well, in my build that I had before, I had an activation speed of 0.15. That means that the time to max out the skill was three seconds. However, my activation duration. I mean, I'm activating duration. My attached duration, basically how long the brands can be attached before the re before they fall off, was only 3.2 seconds. You're like, oh, that's fine. We hit our cap because if you do, you know, if you divide our duration by this, it's over 20 stages. Yes, here's the problem. We ramped up the brand at 20 stages, right? But then we only have 0.2 seconds of it at being full damage. And in my head, I'm like, okay, I can just recast it. But what in my head, I, I, I assume that when you recast a brand, it just goes back to being full damage. When nay, it goes back to zero. So when you recast a brand after 3.2 seconds are done, you start at zero and you have to wait another three seconds of ramp. Effectively, this means that you could, ca um, not effectively, before I get into that, you need to scale more duration so you can increase this. So in his version of the POB, I knew instantly what he was going to do, um, what he's going to get more duration. I knew where the duration nodes were. I used it in Pikmin because I didn't think it was that important. So if you look here, these brand duration nodes, they're kind of out of the way. So we have to change the tree. But now that we're not clusters, uh, it's much easier to do. Um, so he, he skilled this very uh, efficiently. And I'll go over some minor details that he did very well too. Um, brand duration 
here is very good. On top of that, we did take Shaper anyway, and he went for the potency of Will, which is more increased brand duration. With this, our brand duration is now 5 seconds. Um, he does use Inspiration instead of Swift Affliction, but Inspiration um, gives you the inspiration rate, uh, gives you elemental damage, while Swift Affliction gives you 10% more damage than Inspiration. It doesn't drop off, but it reduces the duration. However, the duration loss was like from 5.16 down to about 4.8. Like so, for the 10% more damage, I felt like it was worth it, so I kept it, right? Um, so that's pretty much the gist, right? We scaled more duration, so see what happens now. We also got, um, I, I noticed out in the other tree where we added a Thread of Hope for Glancing Blows. I'm going to go over why I do not like Glancing Blows, but however, these three nodes are very good because it gives you ES and Strength, and this one gives you Dexterity, Cast Speed, and Movement Speed, which helps with the Activation Speed. And honestly, these are stats that we needed anyway, and in the uh, updated version, um of this build that i made that came out very handy because yes while he technically did one up me as a fellow youtuber you know content creator i have to fellow one up him back so he improved my build i'm going back and improving his because i was how would i say led astray by cluster jewels so i solemnly swear that i will never ever 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 gonna make a freaking build guide be with cluster jewels before i make a non-cluster jewel tree because i incorrectly assumed that cluster is always the best option and that's nay not always the right the truth so i will no longer be led astray from cluster jewels and their mischievous lies and their expensive greed this is one of those builds where cluster jewels are not that big of a deal other than holy conquest and we we get it is less damage but you get more energy shield and some other minor details so, okay so all in all right we get our duration let's go back into it we get more duration right so here's what happens with more duration, now we're sitting at, in my current build, 4.8 with a cast speed, uh, activation speed of points. Uh, it's technically 13 with Arc Arcane Surge, but let's say 0.14, right? That means that we now have a two full seconds of full damage. And he went over this thing about this, you know, the average time that the brand was at full damage. The whole point of that was basically how much, once it fully stacked, how much time in average of your full time did it stay at full damage? Because in my version, I hit full damage, but then it lasted 0.2 seconds at 400% more, increased, uh, more damage with 20 stages, and then instantly fell off. So I was only doing ramp damage, basically. I never gave it a chance to do full damage. Well, if you stack more duration, you get more full damage. Converse, no, not conversely, additively, if you do get more uh, activation speed, or aka cast speed, let's say you somehow got the 0.10, I don't think this is possible unless you like, massively invest into it, and I don't think it's worth it. Um, what that does is it takes less time to hit 20 stages, which just increases the time that is a full full right so like instead of taking three seconds to be um like you can see here and second uh three seconds to max out only takes two seconds to max out leaving with another second of full damage leaving you a time for full damage is 2.8 um so now you have 2.8 seconds of full damage and this is what this whole talk about the average uh time that your brand was doing full damage this was very important so we did scale into the duration like you did um, admittedly, I tried to improve this tree and I did, but very minor because he actually perfected it very well. Let's go over it real quick. I want to give credit to where credit is given, you know? Um, did I even say that correctly? He, he deserves the credit, is what I'm trying to say. So, what he did was that he got the duration like I expected, right? And he got this thing, but he went to these nodes over here. These nodes is actually very good. Arcane Swiftness gives you 1% spell damage per chance to block. So, that means you can, if you have 75% chance to block, you have 75% increased damage. Now, with Glancing Blows, we have Max Block with a uh, Rumi's Concoction. That's 75% increased spell damage, which does affect the die. However, I did drop it, um, but we still have Rumi's Concoction. It's still 44% uh, increased spell damage. I'll explain why I don't like it later. Um, and then he takes uh, Fingers of Frost, which is not as good as Deep Chill, obviously, but it's still multi and is very good. Um, on top of that, he, all my items are the same. He didn't change the items. I did some changes to it because we did lose a lot of damage, so I brought it back up, was that because we're using so many auras, like in my, when I brought my P.O.B. over, my current P.O.B. with my current gear, I'll link it down below, in comparison to this one, which is my ideal P.O.B., because we have so many auras giving us more damage, aura effectiveness effectively gives us a lot of more damage. Put it simply, our Prism Guardian Shield, that like has three, uh, three auras that give 60% more damage, in con in I think 56 or something like that, in conjunction. With the aura effectiveness, it gave me, it, went, it took our damage from like 500k or 600k to 1.1 million. It's huge. It's freaking absolutely massive. So he knows this and actually invested into influence 
which did help a lot with the, with the, the mana, but either way, it gave us like 8.6 dot DPS, which is not bad. And it does affect Discipline, giving us, what is it, 200 ES. So it's all around a pretty good node. Um, and it's on the way of getting Arcane Swiftness and Fingers of Frost. On top of that, I had another misconception was I did take a uh, Zealot's Elf. And Zealot's Elf gives you life regen notes while I was using Sulfur Flask. I'm like, might as well take it. Because I thought this lowered your, your energy shield recharge rate. Now let me give, make you a clear... How to explain this? Energy shield regen is basically like, you know, life regen when you get 1% of your life regen. Well, if you get Zealot's itself, that becomes energy shield regen. And that's basically like, okay, 1%, 2%, and it slowly recovers. However, ES naturally recharges. So basically, if you stop taking damage, it naturally goes back up. That speed at which it goes back up is recharge rate. It's not regeneration rate, it's recharge rate. And at that, this node, Wicked Ward, lowered your recharge rate. And actually, it's just a regen rate, which we don't give a shit about because we have no regen if you take out Zealot's itself, which I was perfectly fine with. It was only like 70 uh, ES regen. So what this means that it says energy shield recharge is not interrupted if recharge began recently. So when you take damage, the recharge stops. However, with Wicked Ward, the minute it starts regening, it doesn't stop. So if we do stack a lot of energy shield recharge, right, which I was already doing because if you saw Rhyme Gaze lowered our recharge rate by 50%, so I got Baited Breath to bring that 50% back up to zero. It does give you actually 60% energy shield recharge rate if you have the defense modifier. Um, I don't have it now because they're expensive, but in the, in the ideal POB, you want that, right? He takes... Uh, Essence Surge is on the way there. Um, even though it gives a little ES, it gives you a lot of uh, energy recharge rate. There's another energy recharge right there. Uh, this node over here is good for an, um, ES and res, which counteracts the second third of hope. It also gives you energy recharge rate. So what ends up happening is we recharge super quick. And so it gives you faster start. There's another one called faster start of energy recharge. Basically, it speeds up the time which it starts recharging. So like let's say it takes a second before it starts recharging. It might take another like nine set of one seconds, like 0.75. That's a different story. It's, not, it's, it's important too, but not as important as recharge rate. Um, once it starts recharging, right, it cannot be interrupted. So if we start taking damage, it's still going to regen, like if it's, it's natural regen. So it's really good. And this is where I don't like glancing blows because glancing blows makes you take damage no matter what. So let's say you're at 75% regen. I mean, 75% chance to block, right? We're going to block, but still take damage. While conversely, if we do not have glancing blows, we have a 40%, 44% chance to block. And when you block, you do get stunned. But since we're immune to stun, thanks to Chayula, we don't get stunned. And now technically it's like evasion. Because think about it, guys. If we take a hit and it gets blocked without glancing blows, we take no damage. Since we take no damage, it's effectively like we did not get hit. Even though it'll proc on hit effects and stuff like that, obviously. But for the sake of the recharge, right? Means that because we don't get hit, we have a higher chance that a recharge is going to start. Because if we get if we keep taking hits, because basically taking this node is like reducing our evasion to zero. Because technically we're, we're go from literally not taking any damage to start taking damage, even though it's a fifty percent. Excuse me. So what that means is, without glancing blows, we take no damage, allowing our ES recharge to start and then recharge all the way up, and it cannot be, not, uh, it cannot be interrupted. Excuse me. So I did four tier sixteens. I'm only going to show you one because I want a, a direct comparison to the Mino map that I did last time, the boss kill. The clear speed is about the same, um, but uh, I'm leaving everything else for the build guide. And in those four maps, I died way more often with glancing blows. I'm talking about like it was like four to one or four to zero. A lot of the maps I didn't die without it. And every map that I did with glancing blows, I died because I, I just kept taking hits and it, my ES wouldn't recharge naturally. Right. It's like it's like the beneficial of having energy shield and evasion. It's very nice. Right. Because we do not get hit. Um. So yeah, those are pretty much the um that. So the build got cheaper because we don't use any cluster jewels. I wasted so much money trying to make the build to this, you know, getting the third of hope, getting some other things that I changed. I'll explain now that um at the end of the day, I made all my money back because I sold my cluster jewels. Lol. So yeah. So okay, let's get into the actual. How do we recover more damage? Well, one of the things that we lost because we don't have cluster jewels is brush of death. Right? Brush of death is really important because it gives you recovery one percent of energy shield on kill. Basically, when we kill an enemy, we don't have to wait for the recharge. It just instantly heals us per kill. And as I said before, if we have 20, 30 enemies in a pack, it is going to recover 1% per enemy. That's 20%, 30% of your HP like this when they explode. We lose that. So the only way that the, the only thing that else that gives you that is a Cinder Swallow. Now, a Cinder Swallow, yes, is expensive. And ideally, you want to crit one, but that costs an Exalt. Um, the crit's only beneficial for, a, uh, for Elemental Overload, so you can proc more often. So I just bought this one. It was like 80 chaos. It's cheaper than a cluster jewel. Let's be real. But with this, it recovers 
it, it fixes that problem that we had. He mentioned it also in the comments, but it was basically something we all thought about. It's the only other item in the game that does give you recovery of ES like this. Um, but on top of that, I wanted to make use of enemies ignited by you take 10% increased damage. This affects Dot. So what I did is I bought a wand like this. Where it's the same identical wand, but now it has fire damage to spells, which means that since we're expecting it to crit, um, because we want elemental overload, it needs to crit to proc that buff. Ignite is not like chill, where it needs a threshold. If it crits, it's going to ignite, and it's going to last four seconds, you know, and it can refresh. And it doesn't matter how much damage the ignite is, it's going to ignite, and it's going to proc this, giving us 10% increased damage. So we technically lost the Silver Flask and gained Cinder Swallow, which is a Silver Flask, so we kept our Onslaught with all the, you know, the utility benefits. The second thing that I wanted to do was, since we lost the Cluster Jewels for a lot of damage, another thing that I wanted to do, keep was get, uh, um, what is it? Shock. Because I had cold conduction before, so when we proc um, cold snap, hit some and shock some for single target. Well, as you guys notice, I'm using Skitterbots. Skitterbots has 35%, uh, what is it? Reduce, no, a mana reservation. Same thing as Discipline. Well, another, uh, what do you call it? Commentator by the name of, let me put it up real quick, Drevian mentioned very quickly that there's a ring called uh, Profane Proxy. Now, Profane Proxy, what it does is that your, it picks, depending on where you put the ring, I put it on my left, so it makes the chilling skitterbot, since we're already chill, we don't need that. Instead of applying a chill, it applies the curse you put on the ring, and it, the curse gets plus three to socket of gems, and it gives you a, re, a res, thank God, because I need the friggin' res. And so we put a frostbite in there, so what ends up happening now is, instead of having a curse on hit ring because it was too expensive, we can do this. Now, we gain a shock, a permanent shock from the shock uh, guy over here, while the other one is going to start traveling and, and basically is going to be a mobile blasphemy that chases enemies down with our frostbite. Meaning we actually achieved something identical to having a, a curse on hit with arc using this ring while also getting a shock, giving us a more multiplier. So what that means is that with the storm, with the skitter bots, we have achieved a long range blasphemy to then pop from afar while Yes, they can be inconsistent while close range. We do have a Witchfire Brew, which is technically, not technically, it is a Blasphemy on Flask. So if you still want, let's say your Skitter bots are doing their own thing away and the monsters next to you are not dying, you still have the Witchfire Brew, you can pop it. And that is a Blasphemy that follows you around and that will pop for you and activate, you know, like the Profane Bloom. So that covered Cold Conduction. We covered uh, Giving us a Shock. We covered Breath, uh, uh, Brush of Death with Cinder Swallow as well. So overall, he didn't, he, like, he didn't do this. He only fixed a tree. I did this to make it even better, you know? Uh, I mean, there has to be some sort of connection here. So I give him the props for making a non-cluster tree that I didn't realize could have been the same and cheaper. Um, so going forward, I'm not going to make clustered trees unless it's better. Like the bleed one absolutely needs one, but a, a bow one doesn't need one. Uh, a lot of fire builds don't need one. A lot of tech builds don't need one. But for sure, if you're playing bleed, you do need it. But this is one of the builds you don't. And um, the other thing that was important was he put elemental focus. Now, the thing with Elemental Focus is that since it doesn't let you chill, I didn't want to use it because it hampers my CC, you know, my crowd control and my defense. But there's a thing, right? We all know that, let's say you're using Vortex, and with Vortex, the initial hit with Elemental Hit, uh, Elemental uh, oh, um, what do you Focus, will not chill, but because it leaves a chilling area on the floor, that area doesn't get affected by Elemental Focus and still chills. The same applies to Wintertide, where... Wintertide, on the initial ramp, right, the three seconds, or how long it takes for me, is like two point something, that will not chill on a single target. But once we cast Cold Snap, excuse me, once we cast cold, uh, cold Snap, that will chill them, the leaving the floor, and that takes care of the, um, the CC option. We don't lose any damage because Hypothermia is not like... Hypothermia usually says, oh, uh, deals 39% more damage against enemies that are chilled. It doesn't have that for cold damage over time. You always have cold damage over time with this. So you don't have to worry about damage-wise of Elemental Focus. It's more of CC. Um, so you're talking about things. So how about we're not going to spam Cold Snap for our clear speed. How do we cover that? Well, it turns out, like the Vortex, you know how you guys, uh, it has a debuff when it bounces with um, with uh, what they call it, Conquest. Every time that it bounces, it has a big AoE explosion. That chills. So the minute that the 0.3 seconds activates, and it bounces, is going to chill anyway, so we don't really lose any CC. So Elemental Focus is a good gem for the build, ironically. Um, I didn't expect that, but it is a good gem. And he used it. He wanted Inspiration. I dropped it because I think 10% more damage is more better. Is more better? Is better 
than just point twenty something uh, seconds, which you honestly is not visible to the naked eye. You're not going to tell that. While ten percent more damage, you will. Right. So let's move on to my tree, the one that I did, and quickly, all I freaking did to it was that you see how this is his tree, right? He took this little, he took a staff note here, this steel wood uh, thing, and he had this note over here for more aura effect, and he was like level ninety four. What I did was in my tree, which is this one over here. Excuse me, not this one. Oh, excuse me. It is this one, my current build. In this tree, what I did is instead of using a normal jewel with damage, I actually put a small passive with uh, energy from not. This is actually really cheap. Don't worry about it. Like I rolled like five of these, just alt spamming. And I got it with dexterity and cold res because I needed it for the uh, to cover up this threat of hope. And uh, we need a, just every, like five more dexterity with this um, with this 20 dexterity to cover hypothermia, the 111 cap. If you see here, I'm perfectly at 112, right? Because this does give me six dexterity, all you need is five. So that was really easy to buy, super easy to make. And that gives us, as I say here, I have 8,300 in comparison to, let's go to his PLB real quick. This is 7,700. So for the price of two points, which was this little node and this steel wood, which I don't think is worthwhile, we got 500 energy shield. And then, of course, I dropped Glancing Blows for the reason I said before, because I like having the Pursuit of Evasion allowing me to recharge, uh, you know, without once by blocking everything, I don't take damage, so it allows me to recharge more consistently, right? I'm not taking a broad if it's basically falling flat. So with that, guys, I'm just going to show you a quick Mino map. Not, not the actual map, because honestly, the, the, the clear speed didn't change at all. I just wanted to show you a map boss. Now, note this map boss has 23% more monster life, and it was still faster than the other video. Um, though it doesn't seem that much faster, but it is like a good second or so faster with monster life. So it's notable. It's notable. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. And just so you guys have a comparison point. So let's get on to that and then we'll wrap up the video. See you guys there. I need more mana. And with that, guys, it pretty much covers everything. I'm going to link my tree with the current items that I adjusted basically on my current build. It's basically identical to the ideal one. It just has a little bit less damage because I don't I don't have that perfect wand. I don't have the gloves with the cold dot multi and everything. But all in all, thanks to this guy, we have not had a cheaper build that doesn't require any clusters other than Holy Conquest and a small cluster with um what do you call energy from that, which are both relatively easy. You can buy Holy Conquest one for decent money because it's very popular. So there should be a decent amount of them. And an energy from a knot is very cheap. Um, everything else is done well. It's a lot more defensive now. We have now 8,000 energy shield on a budget. Right? So I think the build overall is a better package for a league starter now. And I like that a lot. So I want to thank Z Spike for commenting and like basically fixing that misconception that I had. And uh, even like I'm very surprised that my build worked the way it did and that much damage. That uh, it killed me you know, that fast considering that I wasn't really properly using the spell at his full potential. Goes to show that, you know, I, I built a very good foundation and he built upon that foundation and together we made something very, very, very nice. Um, and I like that a lot about POE. So thank you for that. Um, and with that, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoy this content, I'm sorry for making so many update guides. Build guides coming very soon, two, three days time. Um, so if you guys enjoyed this, please let me know because I love making these type of like informative deep into mechanics that not a lot of people cover. So with that, until the next build guide or informative video, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.